Okay, so the question asks, how long does it take a child on a swing? Okay, let me just start sketching. I have a swing on which there's a child standing or sitting. Swing to complete one swing if her center of gravity. Okay, so I'm going to try to treat the child as a point mass. Um, this is the pivot point, uh, and they're giving us the distance here. Let me call that L. So hopefully, as you are reading this question, you recognize that, oh, this is a pendulum question. And they want us to use um, pendulum formulas. <laughs> um, so the most important formula here will be formula for the natural frequency of oscillation for simple pendulum. For simple pendulum, it's uh, square root of L. Wait, um, sorry, I gotta think it through. If length is greater, that's a slower oscillation, so L's gotta be in the denominator. <laughs> and uh, what will cause this to oscillate back and forth more quickly is the stronger gravity, so it'll be G on top. So, so this is the natural frequency of oscillation for pendulum, and I uh, have it memorized. It's uh, um, one of those formulas that um, I memorize it through a combination of two things. I've seen it a lot of times, so that's one. Um, and two, there's a kind of, some feature of it you do have to have it memorized, like the fact that it goes as a square root. I have that portion memorized. And which parameter goes where? That, I don't actually have it memorized. I always remember it through my physical intuition, uh, which parameter will affect the angular frequency in what way. And so the thing that I actually have memorized is uh, which parameters <laughs> go into the formula. Now, if you don't have it memorized, that's totally fine. You can always use your textbook. Um, oh yeah, this was in, in pendulum section from before. And yeah, this is the formula. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't have it memorized, you can just look it up. That's what the textbook is for. That, that's what it's for. Now, having written the natural frequency of oscillation, you will see that that doesn't actually get you the sensor directly. That's where you have to remember a few other oscillation formulas. Let me write them down. So the very first thing is, um, well, uh, let me go in a more natural order. Since the question is talking about period, let me write down some of the formulas that relate period. Period is how much time it takes for a single cycle, and that relates to frequency, how many uh, cycles per second uh, this way. Period is the reciprocal of frequency. And now that we are looking at frequency, frequency relates to angular frequency this way. Uh, angular frequency is... 2 pi times the frequency. This 2 pi, it's really converting from cycles to radians, but it doesn't really look that way because neither cycles nor radians are real units. Um, and the important thing is this formula. You should have it memorized. Connecting angular frequency, connecting angular frequency to um, just regular frequency. Um, so with this, I think I can go from natural frequency of pendulum to period. So let me solve this for frequency, which would be omega over 2 pi. And then imagine plugging it in here, which would get me. Um, so reciprocal. So period would be 2 pi divided by omega. Plug in omega from there. be 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Maybe that's what I was remembering. Is that why I was trying to L on top? Possibly. So um, let me declare my variables here, L, G, um, and then my formula for the period is 2 pi times square root of L divided by G, and I need to substitute, the, substitute in the values of um, L is... Um, 2.45 meters basic SI unit and G is 9.8 meter per second squared basic SI unit. And I get a feeling, yeah, that's going to have pi in there. So, oh, wow. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that's one of, so I guess it must be 3.14. Uh, let me pass it through the numeric, the decimal approximation. Uh, 3.14. I huh. wonder how this question got generated. Oh, well, it's correct. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's the um, 
uh, that's the one remaining question I hadn't done. And I, I will tell you that as we get into application of mechanics, in some sense, the topic gets a lot easier because a lot of questions that I can reasonably ask are ones where you plug numbers into formula. Those are what I call easiest physics questions. Um, the hardest part to be figuring out what formula to plug in numbers to. Um, the kind of um, more fundamental problem solving uh, strategy type of questions. It's harder to ask on applications of mechanics without being in so being, being them, without them being so difficult, like upper division uh, level difficult. So, um, so a lot of questions you get in oscillations and waves will tend to be about um, <laughs> like this question where you plug numbers and then you're fried. Um, yeah.